gentlemen, and welcome to the Tech State Asian Culture Museum. You already know who I am, but in case you're joining us for the first time, my name is Nick, and I am the museum's historian and museum curator. Today's video is a very special, but a very sorrowful one. We are here, you just saw the post about it, we're going to do a small video on it. We're going to be saying farewell to the Korean exhibit wing here at the museum. So back in 2000, a very generous donator funded us money to expand from the original building, the main building, and creating Lantern Lane and creating the rest of this wing as known as the Goldstone Exhibit Hall. So without them, we would not have all this extra space in this beautiful museum. And in about 2015 or so, that's when the Korean Association out in Houston was able to partner up with us and they started bringing in a lot of their glorious, wonderful historical artifacts of culture and history from Korea. So we did the distance learning video or the virtual tour, but we'll do one more for the wing itself. So here, right off the bat, you'll see these cookie presses, these cookie cutters. So basically you have the mold and design here, you just press your dough and then you just press in and then you have the dough pop out with the design. And then a lot of these came in different styles of use and everything, so it's pretty neat. Here you have uh, an ink table, uh, it's called a Yonsong. This is basically where you hold your brushes, your paper, your ink tablets and everything. So you find those in a lot of... Uh, traditional houses and they're still be used today. Then you have some of these encyclopedias. This is what they would have worn in the Joseon dynasty. This is a royal couple, note the royal crown, the different jewels and the hairstyle, the intricate fabric, design, coloration of the hanboks. Different pottery, white porcelain, much like in China and Korea, was very sought after because white porcelain is just very pure. It's just neat looking. And then with that, you can get those painted designs on there. And you can see a lot of them have different styles of molding. Uh, and all of this is handmade. We have a brass work ritual vessel set. We have this one. We also had a red wooden one uh, from the Korean Association. That one uh, we put in storage uh, so we can make more room. But this is what uh, for different type of ceremonial purposes you do so for each one has a different purpose. Here you have a lacquer cabinet. This is lacquer wood. You have these blue shells. Very pretty, very interesting. This opens up. And you have basically like a you know, giant closet type thing. You find those in the wealthy households. Here, this was one of my favorite topics to talk about because I enjoyed learning about the hats. So you have these things called gots, they're basically just sun hats. Uh, it's just mesh, straw put together. The reason why they stand tall like that is because Koreans back then in the Joseon Dynasty and before would have the top knots on their hats, so there's a lot of room for them. And these things were, you know, breathable material, so it allowed you just to get that breeze into your head. You have the different theater masks. These hats here on the bottom, these would be used by nobles, the historians, uh, you know, aristocrats, the kings who would go out, you know, day by day, you know, either around the palace or out into the actual kingdom. And then these crowns would also be used by the crown princes, the kings. This is a gold with jade. The gold is very flimsy, so it's like pretty much paper thin. That's why you can see it moving around a little bit as I touch the glass. And then the jade. Uh, jewels on them. And then these are from the Kingdom of Sia. Uh, and you'd find these from the Joseon Dynasty, which is before the Republic of Korea. And then you go back to the Goryeo period before Joseon. Then you have the Three Kingdoms, which is where Kingdom of Sia took place. Here on these mannequins, we have her and the ones over there. What they're wearing is called a hanbak. Basically, it's a kimono for... Uh, when Japanese their kimonos in Korea, they're hanbaks. Uh, so all of them would be silk, would be you know type of cotton, different colors, different styles, intricate, and pretty much if you're more well off, more noble, more wealthy, uh, would determine the more intricate, the better material that you would have. Uh, but I believe pretty much a lot of people did work on box themselves. 
these would be just these are just plastic molds of what uh, candy looked like a lot back then in the in the market area so you had a candy vendors and so they'd place them like this in these weird you know structures mounds of stuff uh, of course you know everyone knows in the food area the better looking display of your food the more attractive it is to customers so when you have a lot of colors people are going to stop by and be like oh what's that and they're going to want some so and then you know you just tell the person the marketer how much you want and they'll pick it out put it in the back for you this area right here though the chairs were the setup with the crown this was a uh, traditional where the king and queen would sit for court or just you know when they're meeting with certain folks and this would be like a more relaxed leisure instead of the big main throne that the king of korea would sit on everyone knows about our giant buddha he's one of our more famous and most heaviest exhibit um, he will stay here uh, when the koreans come to take um, their artifacts back with them this coming week um, since he is with us or in our museum and so like we said in our other disciplinary video uh, buddha was a very wise and noble teacher who uh, founded the eight no, no, founded Buddhism, founded eight no, uh, eightfold path, um, and everything. On all of Koreans today, still practice um, Buddhism. A lot of them, majority of them, are now Christians as well, which is pretty great in itself. Then we move on. These are different things you find in houses. You have a uh, loom and a wheel or reel. Um, this will be used for sewing. You have a bell. This would be used during um, prayer in the Buddhist temples. Incense burner behind you. Well, not incense burner, I'm sorry, that's a bell. Incense burner's over there. That's a bell, you ring it, it makes a very beautiful sound. We have one on the front desk. We love just ringing it for fun. These little miniatures, uh, also I said, are crowns worn by women, more or less. And these would be for different ceremonies, such as weddings, uh, birthday parties, things of that sort. So you can see how fancy they are. You have this hairpin, the more fancy, more rare the material, like gold or jade, would say how wealthy you are. You have the different types of shoes that each person would wear. So these would be the ones where people with money would buy. Then you have the ones, the common folk, these straw, these hay woven shoes, these are the ones that they would wear. Going here to these vases, very beautiful for design, we got the dragon. We have the writings in Korean. Over here, the special vase, which is written in, in a very pre-modern Korean, because as you see, as well over there, that Korean language, far different than these symbols here. But these symbols you can still see in Korea today on certain banisters, certain writings, and everything. This is the incense burners I was talking about. Very cool, the way, sort of, you know, use them for prayer, things like that. Again, sorted vases, different ones, with the turtle, all different materials. You got brass, you got copper, porcelain, everything you can think of. Here we have the portable pocket Buddhas. So there weren't always temples all the way around for Buddha. Um, if you're traveling, especially in Korea, or if you're going to a foreign land out of Korea, and there was no Buddha temples, then you take this with you and you can pray to Buddha when you needed to and when you had to. And these are some jewelry boxes that you would find. Here we have a jontong, which is a quiver for the bow and arrow. You have the fans, you have the wallpaper letter holder, which, you know, kind of come in handy so you won't lose things. You have the pipe. These would were uh, what nobles, or when I say nobles, it would be like people who are historians or those part of the court have a high ranking class in society and they were just very wise and people went to them so you can see they're wearing a form of the gut and the way the robes are and so this is something you'd see more or less happening in the Joseon dynasty type of area okay. down the middle over there you have right in here in the middle that big one you have the uh, uh, you use that for washing clothes so you pretty much wash them and then you dry them on there so there's the different instruments you use like I said white porcelain. This was a grinder that would be used and it was for grinding grain pretty much. 
And we say not to touch it because it is very fragile. Um, that looks like it's made out of lava rock. Come over here to the final case. We have different instruments. You have this, which is also a Chinese instrument. So, like I said, Korea got a lot of its traditionalism, a lot of its culture, language, different things they've used throughout time from China since they were closely related. And they had a great, um, what am I, what's the word I'm looking for? Great uh, partnership that they had. Uh, so that's why a lot of them, a lot of Korean stuff is traditionally Chinese. You have the gong, the drums, everything here. This cabinet is something you'd find in an apothecary. So the different labels would tell you what you would have. So you have, you know, something like chameleon tea, um, green tea, uh, different things, different herbs, just used for feeling better. Uh, and that concludes the final tour of the Korean Hall. We are going to miss it. It was a very beautiful setup, a very beautiful area in this museum. I know a lot of people did enjoy it too, coming in, going through everything. It's it's great. Um, like all things in museums, uh, things come and go. New exhibits must be put on. Uh, there's a lot more we have to put on display. A lot, a lot of things you've already seen, uh, but we're going to expand on that and make it look like it's fresh and new in this room specifically. Uh, so again, you know, it was, it was great. I definitely enjoyed it when I came here last June. I was coming off my senior year of college and uh, doing my capstone research paper, which was based off a certain time period in Korean history. And when I got here, I was very excited because this is where I wanted to be. This was my area of expertise. But as a historian, every area of history is my expertise. And uh, so all of Asian history is something I'm very passionate and very gung-ho about. And I'm still very much interested in the Asian culture, I mean, Korean culture. And uh, there is a traditional Korean gesture and, and their culture. And many do it to a lot of their elders out of respect, you know, in certain ceremonies to those who have passed. And so I like to do it. And it's kind of weird for an American do it, to do it, but as someone who has studied this culture and who has a lot of respect for it, um, I'm going to go ahead and do it. And as they say in Korea, Kansamika, which means thank you. So thank you, Korean Exit Hall, for everything you have given us, you taught us. And we're journeying down Lantern Lane one more time. We are going to now be closing these doors to the Goldston Exhibit Hall. So look forward in the coming months when we will be expanding putting on a new exhibit. Y'all stay safe, stay healthy. See you soon. Come check us out. Thank you.